Thanks, brother. Hello, everyone. So, uh, this a little caught me off guard because I wasn't prepared to talk today, but uh, basically, um, we went to Guyana. This was my fourth trip in two years to Guyana. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with how we got to Guyana in the first place. Um, I have relatives that, that are from there. My mom's from Guyana. You, some of you might have met her. She came here previous. And I had a sick aunt that was there that I wanted to go witness to. And um, I had asked Brother Rob if he wanted to join me. And we were going to head on this trip, just Brother Rob and myself and my mom. And then we were faithful word, and I talked to Pastor Anderson and asked him if he'd give us some discs, if we could, um, you know, just hand some discs out while we were there. We had no idea what it was going to be like. So Pastor Anderson found out that Guyana was an uh, English-speaking country, so he decided, he asked if he could come with us. So he came with us, we got down there, and within like an hour, we realized this place was awesome. Like, you could just, you can't witness enough down there. So we witnessed a bunch, and then we managed to get into school, and then we found out, wow, we can get into schools if you just like give them something, they'll let you, you can give a pencil and they'll let you into the school, right? So we ended up going back a few months later, and on that trip we were able to uh, get into, I think, I can't remember the number, I think it was like 40 schools. And uh, wow. as the government would later proclaim it, we hit them with military precision, because we hit so many schools, Christian schools. I was able to preach at a bunch of schools. We handed out like 8,000 DVDs and Bibles and all that stuff. So that was great. Uh, and then... As, as anything, as you said, adversaries are going to come. After that, after we left there, the government stepped in and said, we're no longer allowed in the schools. Mm -hmm. So we went back again in December, Pastor Anderson and myself, and uh, Brother Steve, some of you may have met him, and we scoped out the area again to see where we could go. So we went into like the villages. So you've got Georgetown as sort of a main town, and then you've got all these like little villages every so many, I don't know, every couple kilometers, it's a new village, a new village, a new village. So we decided, we went to a couple of villages, just sort of tested the grounds, and we found out that no matter where you go, people get saved. Like, we want to go for an hour, and, and you got, you know, five, six salvations, and you didn't stop talking for the whole hour. Like, you were just constantly talking, 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 and then we would report back and be like, you know, like 18 salvations between three of us, and we're like, wow, this is really good. So yeah. Pastor Anderson and I came up with a plan to come back in August, which was the trip that Josh and I just went to, and we wanted to bring a team, and we were going to systematically, I guess with military precision again, <laughs> just kind of hit all these areas again. And that was the plan going in, but as Josh will attest, it didn't really, if they call this military precision, that's going to be like real funny. Because it was just basically a hot mess, just everybody was a big free-for-all, because I think when people got down there and seen how receptive Guyana was, you didn't need any kind of a plan. You didn't need to go to that village over there or that village over there. You just walked out of your door, and everybody that walked by was ready to hear the gospel. Amen. So that's what happened. Was it was just it just became when guys got down there, we well, just watched the WhatsApp and be like, I'm over here, two salvations. I'm over here, four salvations. Cars coming to pick you up. Oh wait, we got nine salvations. That's just crazy, because people couldn't. We couldn't all meet at one point because people were too busy witnessing. So we had, uh, Josh and I ended up just sort of just hanging out and helping out with the farm when we got there. Uh, I don't know if any of you watched the Guyana videos. Um, Cousin Wayne, uh, or Wayne's Farm, if you go and look on, you know, have a faithful word, Guyana, you'll see uh, Cousin Wayne's house, it kind of lives out in the jungle. It's kind of a little bit of a crazy trek out there. You got a four by four for about a good half an hour through, through the mud and forest and field. And, and if you turn the lights off, at nighttime, as Josh found out, it's pitch black. You can't see your hand in front of your face, right? And you get out to this this house in the middle of nowhere that's completely self-contained. Yeah. They grow all their own food. They have their own water. They have their own power, solar. Basically, everything is there that you would need. So if you eat there, whatever's on the table, it was grown on the farm. 90% of it was grown on the farm. Your power, your water, everything just comes from, from there. So. Uh, when we got there, the generator was broken. Actually, when we arrived in Guyana, we went to the generator guy to fix the generator, and Josh was sitting in the truck beside me, and I said to him, um, I'm like, you ready to go soul winning? And he's like, yeah, okay. I'm like, yeah, let's go, come on. So he walked outside, and he went and talked to this guy. His name was Ricky Ash, a.k.a. the Buffalo. And uh, he witnessed to Ricky Ash, and I don't even know who the other guy was, but he witnessed to the other guy, and then two of them got saved in like 10 minutes. Josh walks out, he goes, that was awesome, like, welcome to Guyana, right? <laughs> and then, um, 
then what happened? Then after that, we just basically were trying to fix the generator and get organized, and we started watching the WhatsApp, and it was just like, it was a hot mess. Nobody was picking up anybody. Nobody was getting anywhere. So Josh and I just decided we were just going to soul in wherever we could. So everywhere that we went, we went soul winning. Uh, as a little side note, we, we actually, Josh and I think it will be the only ones ever to have, uh, to be able to say that we, we went soul winning with alligators. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, the story goes, uh, uh, if you know anything about Guyana, there's no clear water there as I, just, as I found out on this trip. It's all black water. So the water literally looks like Coca-Cola. If you look down at it, it looks like you drink wow. it, right? Like it looks like a can, like a Coke. Wow. And um, what people think, it's really dirty and stuff like that, but what it, what it is, it's all the vegetation from, from the trees and everything, it trickles down into the water and it almost like tea. It yeah. steeps the water and it looks like tea. And if you bathe in it, it feels like medicinal. Yeah, nice. So if your skin feels like soft and it feels really good. So on Cousin Wade's farm, he has a spot, if you have any of you seen Pastor Anderson's videos where he's bathing in the black water, that's on Cousin Wayne's farm. So you gotta walk down this long thing and down through the valley and whatever, and you end up in this creek, and then you can bathe in there. And uh, we couldn't get there because the day before we came, there was a big flood. So the, so we couldn't get there, it was too muddy. So there's another place on the way to Cousin Wayne's, and it's called Splashman, what we would call like a water park here, mm -hmm. right? And it's full of black water, and it's got the tiki huts and all that. If any of you have seen the, bap the guy in a baptism with like Brother Steve, you'll see that's, that's where we were. But anyways, that, because of the flood, had flooded over, like, I guess, the gates. And so Josh and I wanted to go to Blackwater first night, so we went swimming in the Blackwater at night. And there was a couple people in there, and we just went soul winning. <laughs> So Josh was witnessing to the one girl, and the one girl's kind of like drifting out towards the further and further, and her friend's like, why are you going out there? And she goes, I don't know, just come back. So they came back, and then anyways, long story short, we had three salvations yep. there. And then while we were you know, drying ourselves off, we found out that alligators could be in the water because the water had gone over like over the fence, so they could be in there, and that's why they were calling the lady back, don't keep going out there. So, <laughs> so technically, we could have sold one with alligators, yeah. right? Yeah. But anyways, um, we we would just stop anywhere and just get out there and just talk to people and people just, were get, they were receptive. It's, you being a Canadian, being here, soul winning, I've been, I can tell you this from, from my experience, I've been all over the world. Anybody that knows me knows I've been everywhere. And I've sold win everywhere, all through the states, various places in the world. And I'll tell you that Toronto is the toughest place in the world to soul win. It really is. If you can get through here, you know, you can get through anywhere. You, you'll be like a rock star anywhere else because this is tough. It's tough here. It's tough getting shut down day after day after day, door after door after door. I'm not interested. False, you know, false this. You know, they're telling you all kinds of heresies. You get them all the way to the end. They don't want to pray because they're too proud. They're Catholic. They're whatever, right? Mm -hmm. You get over there. They want to hear it. They're coming to you, right? And and you get down there, and like I said, I, I told Josh before he left, and he didn't believe me. I said, there will come a time when you're down there, you will witness so many times that you just won't have the energy to witness anymore. You just you just you'll just be tired, and you you'll just look around you and you'll see all the the, the the people just keep coming, and you're just like, I don't have the energy, like I can't do it, and that happened to us on I think it was a Thursday night where we decided, we thought we would, it's a long story, I don't think I have the time to tell it, but basically yep. we, we, got, we got sidetracked and we were heading to get picked up and what we thought, <laughs> we thought we'd walk for about 10 miles, we'd only walk two blocks because people just kept getting saved, people kept getting saved and at some point Josh and I were just kind of like standing there, we're calling for help, like come get us because we can't walk anymore, it's pitch block, it's like 11 o'clock at night or something like that and we're calling, you know, come get us, we're done. And these people are walking by us, and, I, and this guy walks right by us, and I said to Josh, I'm like, you know, if we went and talk to the guy, he'd get saved. And I'm like, we're just too tired. And Josh's like, yeah, I know. That's, imagine soul winning like that, where you just don't have the energy, and people will get saved. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what it was like all the way there. It was the whole trip, everywhere we went, everywhere we stopped, people would listen, want to get saved. They would go get their family members and bring them to you and say, hey, witness to my daughter or my son or whatever. You don't know what you're missing. 
when these missions trips come, you, you guys, I can talk it, I can tell it. He didn't believe me until he got there. Now, he, now he's like, wow, I believe you. You got to get down there and really experience. Because when you come back here, you don't, you're not, you're not so, you're more full of hope. Because here you lose hope. Because you're like, this doesn't work. Like he said, it doesn't. You know, people, people just, you know, they they go out there, they're soul winning, and then eventually this doesn't work. And you, and you just get discouraged, and you're like, you know what? That guy that walks by me, he's not going to care. He's not going to listen. I'm not going to stop and talk to him, mm -hmm. right? But when you get down there and you realize that everybody you talk to, they want it, and they're, they're, they're thanking you. They're like, I would have been in hell without you, and they're, you know, they're hugging you and stuff. When you come here, it gives you that little bit of extra energy to say, well, maybe I can talk to that guy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not so bad because, you know, it's somewhere in the world somebody wants to hear this. Yep. So that, that that was our trip. Uh, there's there's a ton more stories I'm sure I could tell about. You know, we were soul winning right up to the plane. Yep. Can I tell the story about the ticket? Yeah. Yeah, you got time. Cool. I got time. Okay. Yeah. So we were at the airline, getting ready to leave, and this is kind of a walk by faith kind of deal, right? And we're standing in line. There's about 100 people in line. We get through the line. There's still 100 people behind us in line, and we get to the counter, and give the lady my passport and I said to her can we get an aisle or a window seat for me and my buddy here and she's like no there's only middle seats left I'm like really I'm like that sucks I'm like I'm like can you, can you do something she's like no nothing I can do so she takes her bags everything and then you have in Guyana it's not like here where they just take your bags and they just put it behind them you have to take it to an x-ray machine so you take it to the other side of the airport you put it through an x-ray machine and then you come back and then you get your boarding passes so she's like take the bags over there so we grab our bags and I said to her I'm like you just try for that window seat or the aisle seat, please. And she goes, it would be, it would take a miracle to do that. And I'm like, we've got Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And that was it. And we walked away. We go, we went, put the the suitcases through. We come back, and now the lineup is like clearing. And she's like, I'm waiting for these things to print. I don't know what's going on. And the line's clearing and clearing. And eventually, there's nobody. It's just me and Josh standing there. And we're like, what's going on, right? And she's like, I don't know what's going on. I'm waiting for this thing to print. I don't know. And I said. Lord, I'm like, there's a reason why you're keeping us here. Like, there's something we're missing. Josh and I are not done. So I pulled out a YouTube card to, to the lady, and I'm like, are you a Christian? And I hand her the card, and she goes, yeah. I'm like, so if you die right now, do you know you're going to heaven? And she goes, oh, they just printed. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave her a one saved, all saved, because she didn't have the time. And then she goes, I hooked you up, and we both got aisle seats. So we got our miracle. Upgraded, too. We upgraded, too. Yeah, we were in, we weren't in first class. No, we were in uh, Caribbean Plus. Caribbean Plus, yeah. So with the hardest seat, like probably as hard as this pulpit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we were upgraded. So yeah. So, and yeah. Then, that, that was anything else that you could think of? There's just, there's so many. There's um, so many stories. I'm sure you guys seen Josh's testimony with the guy with the face. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that was, I didn't even know. I, I, I didn't know. I, I walked into this, um, they make bricks, just like just mortar bricks. And I just walked in, and there was a guy sitting over there, one here, and he was sitting like behind like the pole that was here. And I was just kind of like going one, two, three, witnessing to them. And he was getting it, and he was encouraging his friends to do it. And uh, and then afterwards, when they, when they all prayed, he got up and started talking to Josh, and he started telling him that you know he was hit by a car and left for dead. And, you know, if he would have died six months, yep. six months ago, he would have went to hell. And he didn't know it, right? And he was so thankful that that we stopped and talked to him. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and you know, you're battling over there. You know, here you're battling, you know, you know, reprobates and false religions and lovers of themselves. You're dealing with all that stuff, right? The only thing we're dealing with over there is Joe Olstein. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> And the repent of your sins doctrine. And if you can get through, if you guys know how to explain a repent of your sins, you know, a salvation plan without repent of your sins, and you're gold. Yep. Right? That's right. So that's our testimony. I'm sure you'll hear more stories as <laughs> as the days go on. But as a message, if you hear about another missions trip coming up, just decide to go. Just do it. You'll come back changed. Your family will come back changed. You will not be the same person. You'll see the world. You'll see soul winning the world. Everything you'll see differently. Mm -hmm. and, and I say this every time to, to my friend, my buddy Vinny back there. I said, Vinny, when I come back, I'm going to be changed. And he was just telling me the other day. He's like, Yeah, you know what? You came back changed from every trip. So, and this is fourth time, and I came back changed again. Just see things differently. All right, guys. Yep. Get out right. there. Cool.
Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing, like, like when it came up in January, the mission trips available, like, I just basically said I'm going. I didn't know how, I didn't know what, I, you know, I, I had gifts come in, I had things work out in my favor, and, and I was able to go. But honestly, God starts with that, that willing mind to just, to just say, hey, there's that trip in six months, I'm going. And you just, you just believe it, you just put that out by faith, and God will work out all the details. And like you said, you'll, you'll never be the same. There's even opportunities for, for like, super duper uh, silent partners. Because I even had an opportunity where this this guy drunk as a skunk, um, our our one our one buddy Gabriel from Ohio, he's witnessing to his daughter, and this guy's over here playing some game, and we we see we see these three, and Shana just saw three saved over here, and then three saved over here, and there's three sitting at this table. I'm like, these are yours. You're going for the three peat, man. <laughs> like three, three, three. Let's do it. And we get up there, and this guy's just like blah blah blah. You can smell the rum on his breath, and it's and he's just just drunk, right? And so. So I get an opportunity, I kind of like bring him to the side a little bit, and Shane just starts witnessing to his kids now. And so all of his kids are like primed and ready to get saved. This whole one is in place, it's good. Now I gotta be the silent partner. Usually you're just kind of standing there, just like pray, praying for them, and like maybe you've had a dog or something. Silent partner is very passive here. You're just basically encouraging your friend as you go. But there's honestly very little need for silent partners when you go to Guyana. Because we stop and we kind of pair up, but then it's just like everybody's just, one guy's over here soul winning, one guy's over there soul winning, one guy's over there soul winning, and we just kind of all stay close and like keep each other safe and accountable and watch for one another. But this time I actually had to be a, a silent partner. And so I'm sitting there and this guy's telling me he's like a Seventh-day Adventist. He's telling me that one time he had this vision and Jesus himself came to him and like shook his hand and said, you're going to be my representative on earth. And he's saying all these crazy things that he had. And here I am, his, his family's about to get saved, but he keeps like turning and about to stop it. And so I'm like, tell me more, man. That's really exciting. What else happened? Just this big dumb grin on my face, trying to keep this guy like focusing on me as he tells these like dumb, crazy stories about how, you know, yeah, I was like, he's like, I was the representative of Jesus, but then, you know, I started this business. I got really busy. I know things going on. And he's just, you know, like, like, like serving the Son of Man is, is not good enough. He has to run this little variety store here. He's busy with other things. But I had to just keep, go, like, asking this guy to tell me more and more and more and more. And then finally, I look over and Shane's praying, and I look over and Brother Gabriel's praying. They're both done. I'm like, all right, man, see ya. <laughs> just walk away. Like, I'm out of here. I can't take any more of this. But that's, that's the thing is, is you, you're, you're, your skills for even silent partner, your skills for preaching, you'll learn to get a concise gospel in. You'll learn to answer questions quickly and on the spot. And and uh, and people are just receptive, and, and any of these things. You see one come up, you know, next year in September. Just just if God is like ding ding, that's the one. Just go, okay, I'm in. Jump in. That's all you can do is by faith. Just say hello. I mean, quick point. Yep. The other thing is you can't really screw up the gospel over there. Mm. You, like you, you you just give the verses and you just keep going. If you you misstep or you fumble, they have no idea. Just 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 keep going. Yeah. You can't screw it up over there. I wasn't even turning in my Bible most of the time. I, I had my, my Bible open in the back. There's a plan of salvation that's about a page two, a page front and back, and then the other one and a half. And I would just, whatever seemed to apply, take them to that verse. Obviously, starting with Romans 3.23 is the best way to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And then, But I'm, I'm like, do they need to hear more about the gift, or do they need to hear more about belief? I would just basically walk through these verses. They were right there. Every once in a while, I'll put my Bible to another one. So you could probably literally go with like a cue card. And just see people saved, just one after another. It's it's really easy. You don't have to answer all those questions, and you don't have to know everything. You just have to know Jesus. Point them to, point these people to them. They're ready. So that's that's the encouragement I want to give. Um, 